Hey guys, welcome to today's episode called Electric Washboard. Like, I don't have enough stuff going on where I have to dive into something new and exciting, but yeah, we're gonna take a store-bought washboard and we're gonna electrify it. Why am I doing this? Well, Tammy loves washboard music and um, anytime she sees one, she starts doing this. You might have noticed in an episode I did called What's on the Bench, I did something in the middle about canned heat and sterno and throwing some spoons in a stream where canned heat's house was and whatever. You're going to see those spoons show up because I think I'm going to put a pair right here so when Tammy plays it, she can just grab the spoons and play it up and down rather than trying to put on thimbles and things like that. It would be difficult for her. But anyway, this episode, we are going to put a volume control, a piezo, and a jack on this so we can plug this thing in. Now, when it comes to washboard players, you got to love Cody Dickinson of the North Mississippi All-Stars. And um, I got to see him uh, with his brother Luther and their bass player the other night. And C6 Steve jumped on the stage. It was a great show. Love you, Cody. But guess what, buddy? I think you take a back seat to probably the best washboard player. Consistent. Always there. Always performing. Um, even does kiss type stuff. Light your stuff on fire stuff in her shows. Do you know who that is? You don't know who it is. Well, let me see if I can give you a couple hints. You know this guitar? Remember this? 72 Chevy. Big damn band. Reverend Payton's big damn band. You know who their wash player, board player is? Yeah, Breezy Payton. Um, I got all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, check this out. Reverend Payton, Big Damn Band. Um, whole Damn Family. Isn't that slick? Yeah, signed uh, front and back. Saw them down in Santa Ana a couple years ago. Um, I did an episode where I talked to Reverend about um, tuning and that type of thing. I'll see if I can't give you a link up there. But yeah, I got the set list and everything cool. So um, I do want you to know that I picked up a washboard one time at the Acton Women's Club. Yeah, nonstop action, Acton, California. The Acton Women's Club. I bought an old beat up washboard for two bucks and then I painted it up because Breezy likes polka dots and stuff. And that same $2 washboard ended up in their video for their song called So Delicious. Yeah, I said that, oil filled people. So delicious. Yeah, have fun with that metric, hater. Anyway, the official video for that song, So Delicious, is popping up right there with the I card right there. And that black and white, black and red, I can't even remember. I put pennies on, I painted it black and I put pennies on there, spray painted them some. Anyway, it's right up there, right now. So delicious, yeah, that's my washboard, son. So in the um, washboard world, as usual. So while we're doing housekeeping, don't forget to give me a like, a subscribe, and notify, get yourself notified so you can automatically click on my brilliant content. I wanna give a shout out to my friend Jack, who's having me uh, make a license plate guitar. This says Blues is a Blues Lady. Hello? Yeah? For you smart ones, Blues Lady. We're doing a license plate guitar for my friend Jack. And once again, uh, the music for today is the Reverend Payton's Big Damn Band, The Whole Fam, Damily. This is a great album. Um, yeah, I actually have it playing on uh, vinyl right over here with that little purple speckly a uh, record player I got over here that's become my trusty friend even though it doesn't do well with dust in the shop. But anyway, um, there's a lot of songs on here. Reverend Payton uh, plays like, um, you can go back to the 30s and hear that kind of guitar and stuff and he's got a lot of uh, social commentary on this album, kind of tongue in cheek hid behind the scenes. So this is the one you want. Anyway, we're going to be listening to that while I show you how to take this 
new washboard and mess it up into something that only a few of us can appreciate. Let's hit the bench. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, just so you know, I'm not lying. I got that turntable going on that purple speckly Victrola turntable playing a whole fam damnly there. Worn out shoe is on right now. And we're back to the bench. Um, I got this Baron's uh, metalware uh, washboard. I got it over the internet. I got it to the house for about 20 bucks. Oh yeah, I know y'all are fixated with some. So let's see what's going on in the background here. This looks pretty phony right here, but uh, get the washboard out of the way. Uh, what do you not want to cover? Do not covet my Texas Reamer Company downhole drilling tools belt buckle. Um, I'm an expert in this area. Very few people besides me can uh, have the skill set to wear a Texas Reamer uh, belt buckle. I know I am, but what are you? Anyway, y'all need to straighten up because I am a Palmdale Junior Deputy Sheriff. Um, yeah, do not covet my New York World's Fair cake cutter, whatever it is. Um, I think you're going to see this become a tailpiece or something like that. Anyway, mind your own business. Do not covet my, my stuff, including this Mississippi House 1960 license plate. All right, back to reality. Um... This is how these washboards work. You're supposed to take soapy clothes and run them over here at beat a rock all to hell. But anyway, doing this makes this noise that only Breezy Payton and to some extent Cody Dickinson know how to do. But in order to electrify this thing, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over. And um, first thing we want to think about is putting some type of pickup on here, which conveniently they have this board here so I can put something right under here and hide the wires over here and put my controls over here I don't know if you can see this or not over in this area um, I have been told by the powers that be that this thing definitely needs a volume control because Tammy will run around cranking it up through all the amps in the house and apparently that's not desirable but anyway what we're going to do is we're going to put a piezo pickup underneath here we're going to run the wires over here and then do our controls and jack and that's basically it let's take a look at what we need to do this job first off we need a way uh for the player to string this around their neck because you don't want to be trying to carry it with one hand and do all your fancy washboard moves with the other so uh, I've marked off uh, where the strap comes down and should fit and then I've got a couple of these strap buttons that go in with this nice little uh, what do you call it cushion thing and these long screws so we're just going to pre-drill a hole here and make sure that it's the same uh, size or way down on both sides and put those in that's step one all right so that happens to be about 210 millimeters down you're welcome metric hater and we are about 38 uh, millimeters wide so we're going to center that up about right there and then we're going to drill our little pilot hole right here isn't this exciting I'll tell you what's exciting is in the background is the music your cousins on cops you want to know the words to that because that is a true family song that I've been made aware of um, I don't want to get into too much detail and and uh, embarrass anyone while well, I'm ill prepared over here and putting all this stuff together see I put this down in here like this I put that nice little cushy thing there whatever that is I think you use those so you don't slam cupboards at night when you come in late and wake everybody up that kind of scrap apparatus anyway I'm gonna run this down through here like so let's try that again without stabbing myself you know, this never happens to me unless I have the camera on. Y'all know that, right? I'm going to run this down. Look at that right there. Let's see if we got any shiners over here. Nope, turned out nice. Yeah, your cousin's on Cops, brother. This song get got them a gig on Jerry Springer pay-per-view. I mean, so it's that significant. Anyway, one more on the other side. I won't bore you by showing you that. <laughs> guess what I lied I did show you the other side look there's two they're even and you got to hear the end of your cousins on cops see what I do for y'all 
All right, perfect. No shiners coming through. Now let's kind of take a look at the back side here and see what we need. Um, these things get kind of sloppy, so I'm going to take my white clear, puts on white, dries clear, all-purpose caulking. I'm going to run a bead of that around up in this area. Um, not down in here because I want this to rattle and do what it does naturally. Hey, I'm not going to give you people any free advertising unless you sponsor my channel and all the five hits it gets every week. Anyway, let's take a look at what's underneath this. Here, let's do the surprise reveal and see what else we got here. Now, I'm going to need a jack because I want to plug this thing in. So I got one of these. I'm going to end up drilling a hole through the leg right here and so this mounts the outside this is a good sturdy jack and I'll put it up here to hide everything I'm also going to use one of these volume controls you see how the potentiometer goes the shaft is going to go all the way up through there I'm going to put that on the outside where the player can reach it um, but what's going to fuel these things is a piezo now I have a couple choices here I can use a bigger piezo or I can use a smaller piezo let's talk about what the difference is and what that's going to look like being mounted okay so the size of the piezo does matter because the more space you cover the stronger the vibration signal will be back so the nice thing about these little ones is you can put them in you can hot glue gun them in i would cut a groove right in here with a tin snips or something so these wires come out and file it to a v to make sure that the wires don't get cut can you see all that anyway you just fill this up and you would just put this under here like this and make sure these wires are protected with my friend shrink wrap you can't get enough of that where is it can you see it yeah shrink wrap or if i want to use this bigger piezo what I can do is take a piece of this old fingerboard cut off and I can put this like so. I want to make sure that this is facing down against uh, the part that's going to vibrate. Now I don't want these wires sticking there like that to wear back and forth. So what I can do is when I figure out where I want the piezo to go on this piece of wood and how wide the piece of wood needs to be just by looking at that and making a mark there I think I'll cut it off somewhere around here before I hot glue gun this on here again I'm going to put this facing up because it will be down I'm going to take a Forstner bit that's just a little bit bigger than that that way I can put this in here cut a, a groove for these wires and keep them out of the way if these wires are crimped in here somewhere and things are moving at, around after a while they're going to come loose and you're not going to have any sound so Again, we're going to take a Forstner bit, go down just a little bit. How much? A little bit uh, more than the width of these wires. So this will fit flush right here. And then when I flip this over like this, it will sit down in there like so. And then I can take these wires and run them through shrink wrap or some kind of drip irrigation tubing or something and get those out of the way. And then run them through here and make my connections down here. So I've, what I've decided to do here is instead of going with the old, yeah, lining and kugels, good stuff comes out of northern Wisconsin where my people are from. You know that already. Anyway, I'm kind of eyeballing this. I want this piece of wood to be about like that. So then I'll take my uh, trusty ruler here and figure out that it's 40 millimeters. So I want a 20 there. And then I want to do, it's also 40, it's 42 here, so we're going to do 21 right there. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking in the camera, yeah, there it is. I need a hole right there. So I take my little awl and my hammer. And then that way, this point of the Forstner bit, I can drill down in there so let me get that done i'll show you what it looks like but i'm gonna cut this off first on the saw and get that where it needs to be the right width okay guys let me show you what i've done i've taken this forstner bit remember i had that little pilot hole i just run that down like so till it's the thickness of the piezo and the wires you see that like so um when i when i got that cut I took my flat saw, did a few notches here and grooves like here, and then popped between the cuts 
knock that out got that nice little groove in there for the wire see then I can take my flat file like this and go like so now remember I want this face up it's going to go against the metal of the washboard and then I'm going to hot glue gun all this together like so it sits nice and flat everything's protected including the wires that are coming out of here okay guys so we're ready we're ready to hot glue gun this I got the hot glue gun right here a um, couple things I want you to keep in mind you always want to remember keep that shrink wrap where you can see it so you don't forget it um, when I put the glue on here you're going to see that I'm going to glue put a layer of glue over this and something here I don't want this to be really thick so it it doesn't sit flat against the um, the washboard but um, when it comes time to hook these wires in that are going to run all the way down the side I'm going to use this pushback wire I've talked to you about and I, I told you in a previous episode um, that I, I use this wire because it's pre-tinned you can push it back I've got two separate colors uh, that I typically use one for hot wires for uh, piezos and coils and the other one the hot wire coming off of my jacks and then of course I've got the black which is ground for everything but I'm gonna have to make some connections here to lengthen these wires out and I'm gonna want that to be in shrink wrap anywhere there's a connection I might go shrink wrap this right here but let me show you I'm gonna push this down a little bit and I'm gonna go around this with the hot glue and make sure that that right there is covered up good we're gonna go all the way around like so I'm gonna stop for a minute make sure it's pressed down in there wet my finger a little bit and make sure that it's nice and level like so and then once it is I'm just gonna go over the whole thing here like so again wet the finger and mash this down like so so I can tell it's nice and flat we got a little bit right there a little hole right there there we go go over and make sure that this is all nice and flat and then this will be the part that sits up against the washboard let me get the washboard and see this will fit down like this I'll turn it this way see if I can start a fire but look at that it fits real good and then I can hide my wires again I'm gonna shrink wrap everything maybe run them over there I think that's the better solution there now I like these little pushback box cutters like this because again I want everything to be nice and smooth so something's sticking up a little too much I can just go along like that and cut it off make sure everything's good that way that sits flat and I'm gonna go ahead and make my wire connections with this pushback wire uh, make sure all that's in shrink wrap and run them down through there and through there and I think I'm gonna drill a little hole right here uh, and then we'll be prepared to do this once I've got all the wires where I need to be like so I'm gonna adjust this the way I want and then I am going to put a tad of wood glue right here and then I will hot glue gun the seam here to make sure it sticks there but that will pick up everything the washboard does all right there we go we're good got the soldering gun out. now I have a decision to make I don't really want these wires any longer to, than they need to be because um, the pushback pretend wire is a lot more durable so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off about here I'm going to make sure that I'm careful stripping this because I don't have much to work with there now and I've got those two ends bare now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that before I solder the ground wire so I'm going to push this back I'm going to pay, take a push a piece of the shrink wrap and push it way down here now if I put it here and push it down here when I heat this up to solder it what's going to happen is the shrink wrap is going to melt a little bit and when it comes time to slide it over this wire it's not going to work so you see here I've wound this up and I'm going to bend that back against itself like so and then once I've got this soldered this piece of shrink wrap right here 
I can push this up and cover that and reinforce all that, you see? But I'm gonna get that way out of the way. Now, you remember that I told you when you're using your soldering iron, you want a couple things around. You want a piece of emery cloth, you want the file, and you want the wet sponge. See, look at that, it'll, it'll tighten that up and get it nice and clean for you. Just have that sponge sitting there. Now I got my piece of 0 .040 solder. I just touched that right there. And get a little bit of solder on there like so. All right, there we go. Always get that tip on that wet sponge. Make sure it's ready for your next connection. That gives you a little bit of time to have this cool off and then we can take a piece of shrink wrap that we had all the way over here and slide it forward and we're going to take it over that connection see right there you see that now I can take my show us what size piece you want what does that mean anyway matches or matches I'm going to shrink wrap that down like so and that connection is going to be tight and it's never going to go anywhere. Now let's get this one hooked up to some hot wire. Okay, now what I've got is make sure I got my tight bond. I got it, you know, let me show you a little trick. I haven't shown you this before, but I got a mason jar that I just store my tight bond in like that. That way when I open it up, it's ready to go and I don't have to play this game. So let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna put some tight bond right here and then when I slip this underneath here, um, remember the piezo goes down. And we'll put that right there and then I'm gonna hot glue gun the edge but you notice I have still the big spool of the pushback wire attached so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna get this where it needs to be and figure out and then take this over to here like so I hope you can see the end and all my connections are gonna be over here so I'm gonna cut this off and the final thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this under here, that nothing ever happens to these. So I've got this bigger shrink wrap that I can put over both sets of wires like this. You see this? I hope it doesn't prove me a liar. But I can take this now and slip it all the way over. And then when it comes time to put all this down and caulk it, whatever, all that is under shrink wrap. All the way right there you see how that works and you never have to worry about it again okay I don't want to belabor this guys but it's really important to durability um, about as important as that song why everybody always get paid but me by Rev in the background there anyway you can see I pulled these wires through here and they're gonna go up to where those wider connections are and then I've got this bigger piece of shrink wrap right here that fits over not only these wires but also that other shrink rack. And I'm gonna take that all the way up here, like so. I'm gonna melt all this, and then I'm gonna glue everything in here. All right, nothing is gonna pull that loose ever. See, it's all sucking down. I'm getting right there to where that bend is. Look at that. That piezo is gonna be safe. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of tight bond right there see if I got that stored upside down it comes out right away put a little bit of that there and now we're going to kind of get it up in the upper third or so we'll put that there get our wire through this way get the volume controls on the right side There we go. That looks good. I'll make sure that glue dries up good. 
and taken put her hot glue gun over here like so and run a bead right there they'll tighten up fast we'll smooth that out a little bit with a burned finger there we go we're gonna leave that alone for a little bit and that tight bond will set up against here Again, the piezo is down. It'll pick up everything from here. Now we can get on the rest of this. Okay, now I'm going to think about putting my jack down here and my, and my volume control here. But the wires are here, so i got to get down through this piece of wood. So I'm just going to drill a, piece of, a hole through that piece of wood right there, going all the way through from here to here. And that shrink wrap being on there will come in handy to protect that. So let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty clean. I'll put a piece, some caulking in there once I get everything where I need it to be. Right across there and then caulk both sides of this in. So we've got my jack here. It's facing to the outside of the leg. We'll kind of eyeball that. And again, my potentiometer, the knob, is going to be facing the other way. But we'll just put a little mark right there. And then we'll find the center point for each one of these. Flip this over so I can use millimeters. It's showing to be uh, 44, so that's the center point will be 22 there. And the stand, the uh, camera stands in the way, so 22 there. Now I'll drill me a couple pilot holes and then drill the holes for the jack and the potentiometer. I am going to want to sink the potentiometer in a little bit. So, what do you know, it's about the same size as the piezo, so I'm going to sink this down a little bit so that sits down. I don't want this standing up and having all the wires sticking up for everything to hang on. Okay, pilot hole's done. Okay, let me show you a little trick here. I got these pilot holes, and I'm going to use this Forstner bit for the jack hole. Um, you see, I've got that pilot hole right there. I want to go down a little bit with this, using that pilot hole as a guide. So when I come through from the other way, I won't blow it out there. So I'll just drill that down a little bit and flip it back over and come through all the way from this side, like so. That went pretty rough at the end, but see, nice. This mount's nice and smooth right there. I just put my screws in and we're good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. They're about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller a bit for the shaft, but you want to think ahead. If you're going to, if you're going to use a Forstner bit to inset this, you don't want to use this one first because it'll be slopping all over the place so you got to kind of sink ahead so anyway the idea is i'm going to sink this down a little bit to get it out of the way and try to make it a little bit flush and then i'll come through from the other side so we can end up with a nice clean hole like this one for this to come up for our knob to fit on right here if you see here there's just a little bit of that tab sticking out, so I'm going to trace that like so and go around there and pull this out. Again, I want this to sit down a little bit, so I'm just going to take a chisel and round that off and get rid of that mark right there where this sits down flush. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is there's a little tab on these potentiometers, you see, and that can either be your friend or your enemy. If you break that off, this thing can spin later, but if it's got a hole for itself down in there, like so, I'm going to figure out where I want everything to be, and then I just put a mark and drill a little hole right down in there, and that'll sit and make this flush and flat, and then this thing won't turn later. 
so I can see where that tab is right there so I put a mark right there I know it's about a quarter of an inch off so I'm just going to drill a little shallow hole right there and then that tab will sit down right there and everything will be flush all right now I've got to get these things stabilized so I can do the wiring so I'm going to uh, flip this over and I'm going to put the screws that hold the jack on these little screws like this and then I'm going to put um, the nut that holds the potentiometer on on this side and then we'll solder everything up all right now that we're putting this wrench on here to tighten this up all the way that little tab that we drilled the hole for in the back is helping us out because if it wasn't this thing would be spinning all over the place right now as we got close to the end now we're marking the holes for the screws that will hold the jack in from this side Okay, last thing I want to show you, you know what Loctite is, right? I'm just going to put a little drop right there after I get everything tightened up here, like so, and let that soak in, uh, because if I do that, spend a little time doing that, wipe that off so it doesn't stain anything. Once that Loctite gets down in there, this is never going to want to come loose, no matter how many times you give it the breezy patent test. All right, now it's time to hook everything up. I've given you a couple lessons on how to wire up uh, potentiometers, uh, whether it's for a piezo or a coil. I think that uh, piezo lesson will come in handy. I'm pointing at my pencil at the upper screen. I'm going to try to give you a link to that right now. We want to remember that the outer lug here is going to go the hot wire on the piezo, the pickup or the coil or whatever you'd be using. It's always the outer one. And then the inner one is the hot wire that goes to the jack. Now the, the hot wire on the jack is usually the shortest uh, of these two lugs. And then once we get done with that, we remember we run a jumper wire to the top of this so we can make all of our ground connections here on a piezo. On a coil we'd be using something to ground the strings. We don't have to do that this time. But this ground wire coming from uh, the piezo on the washboard as well as a ground wire we're going to run from here to here all have to come together and then we'll one more time hot wire from the piezo goes to outer lug hot wire from the jack goes to this inner one you can see that I've prepped by putting pieces of shrink wrap out of the way so I can shrink wrap everything once the soldering is done so let me solder this up okay guys everything is on here we've got our last piece of big shrink wrap here we're taking the ground off the the jack and putting it to the grounds from the piezo and the pot there we go there's our soldering iron on the sponge now we're just going to tack this together like here like so all right we'll let that cool off bend it over and shrink wrap this and then it should be ready to see if it makes any noise I'm going to take a little piece of wire and get all these together bound up like that flatten them out so they're out of the way and we're good all right guys last thing I want to do is get this thing level make sure everything's the way I want it there that's all solid now I'm going to take this hot glue gun flip that back like that and just run some hot glue down in here Keep those wires stable. Need some more hot glue stick. Let's 
Just like so. Easy money. Make sure there's none of it sticking out. Like so. And I'm gonna put, if you can see that there, I'm gonna put a bead right there to make sure that that doesn't move around. And we are good to go. Be time to hook it up to some power and see what it does. All right, last touch. We got this bright red guitar strap. That seems to go with things pretty well. What do you think? Hey guys, I am excited beyond compare. Uh, before I get freaking out on this thing, I need to remind you the music for today has been Reverend Peyton, Big Damn Band, Whole Fam Damily. Whole Fam Damily. You better get this one. Your life will not be complete without it. Now, before I start tearing up the world here, you remember in the episode called What's on the Bench? A couple weeks ago, right up there. Remember uh, in the part about Canned Heat, the Sterno commercial that I made myself? Uh, and I talked about getting these spoons from the Topang Topanga, sorry, rented lifts, Topanga Canyon Country Store, which is right down the street from the canned heat house. Remember all that? Well, I got a bunch of these spoons, but I only need these two right now because I'm fixing to tear me up some washboard. And, you know, this manicure doesn't just happen, so I'm not going to waste it. But listen to this. Isn't that awesome? Well, this is even more awesome because that wasn't even with any sound. It even gets louder. It gets... So, I'm going to get better at this, which will come to me very easily. And um, while I'm doing that, y'all have fun. Uh, fathom this episode and wait for the next one. So, I will see you next time.